Good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. So I will sing hallelujah. I give thanks and praise to God. We want to say greetings to you from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We want to start this morning off with a praise song. I will sing hallelujah. We have something different for you today. We're going to bring about our virtual choir. But first I want to just say thank you to Brother Willie Everett for all of his hard work and labor of love and putting all of this together and all of the people that took part in this. So now we bring you greetings and we bring sing praises to God. So let us lift our voices and sing hallelujah. Yeah. 
and everyone this Sunday morning June the 7th 2020 in the season of Pentecost I am Pastor Sylvester Everton Chase Jr. the senior pastor here at Wesley United Methodist Church the Lord is still blessing us We've been away from each other, but still we have felt the presence of the Lord where we have been. Thank you for tuning in, not only our Wesley members, but friends of the church, relatives, whether you are in the city or whether you are out of town or out of state, it's good to have you to be tuned in to worship with us during this time on this Sunday morning. We hope everything is going least pretty good for you and hopefully you are calling on the Lord each and every day. So much is going on in our nation right now and I think we need the presence of the Lord with us every time we go out, even in our own homes, we need to know that the Lord is there. Okay, everyone is feeling pretty good. Everyone doing pretty good. The Lord's been taking care of you. How's everyone doing out south? And those live out north, how you doing? Uh, Georgetown, Round Rock, Pflugerville, Leander, Bastroff, Mana. You doing okay this morning? If you got Satan in you, get him out now. Get Satan out of you now, amen, because, man, this, we want to start off the month right, this being in the season of uh, Pentecost. Now, don't forget, we're going to take partake of the sacrament of Holy Communion at the very end of this worship experience. At the very end, after we have the preached word and our invitation of song, we're going to go into communion. So hopefully you have yours set up and not get it set up, bread, crackers, water, juice, wine, get it set up 
so you and the rest of the household can partake of the sacrament of Holy Communion. Amen? Amen. All right then. God is good. And all the time, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. Also, let us keep in mind our graduates. And, you know, we mentioned them last, last Sunday. And I uh, told those who hadn't sent us any information to send us something. And Miss Janae Scales, one of our graduates, sent us a graduation card letting us know about herself. Hey, and praise God, she's graduating. Miss Janae Scales is graduating from the Ann Richards School for Young Women Leaders. All right, right Miss Janae Scales. And truly, she's one of ours and brought up here at the church and finishing up there at the Ann Richards School for Young Women Leaders. And she wants us to also know that she plans to attend Austin College in the fall. Austin College in the fall. She's going to be taking off going, going down the road there. And she is going to major in public health. She's going to major in public health. Amen. And us senior citizens, we, we need people like that, don't we? Amen. We need a lot of them. Praise God. And congratulations to you, Janae. And our prayers will continue to be with you. And we'll be saying more about our graduates as time goes on, moving toward the time that they go back to school. Haven't heard from our young men who are graduating. Amen. And heard from the ladies, but I need to hear from the young men who are graduating here at Wesley United Methodist Church. Our graduates, our young men. Okay, I need to hear from you. What are you doing, planning to do, and where, where are you graduating from? Can we do that? Young men. Okay, then. Praise God, praise God, praise God. All right, much going on in our nation. You know, this, this thing that's been going on with George Floyd and man what a it's a movement isn't it in the bad if someone has to die before a movement can get started for right and truly he was killed persecuted on the public streets a knee in his neck no one should have to die like that in America. We should be better than that. Whether it's the police of us, we need to be better people. All of us need to be better because we want to make this world a better place. Liberty and justice for all. All right. Come on now. Prayer time. Let us. Bow there where we are. Bow there where we are. In your bedroom, in your living room. On your couch. Lord, we are talking about we want to change. But help us to change, oh God, as your children on the inside. Get in our hearts, get in our spirit right. Getting it right with you and with one another, oh God. So many people are hurting, oh God. They've been hurting. Now the world seems to be taking notice that all is not well with everyone, everybody. People seem, oh God, right now to want to reach out. He'll help someone to make this world a, a better place, oh God. 
Oh God, help us to continue this movement to want to help each other. Don't let it stop, oh God, after the funeral is over for George Floyd. Help us to realize that we need to be on a mission, oh God. Now, God, touch us. Let us be your modern day missionaries. Wherever you would have us to go and have us to do, oh God, we have a willing spirit right now. So now come and have your way with us, oh God. Work on us on the inside. If you find anything that shouldn't be, oh God, dissolve it, take it away. Try to make us whole right now in your presence, Lord. Now, oh God, for those who are hurting, those who are without a job, unemployed at the moment, oh God, help them to hold on before a job is on the way. Help them to hold on, oh God, that you got something even better, oh God. Help them to hold on, oh God. Let them know that you are going to work things out in due time. Help us to band together, oh God, and help us to feel that we are one with one another. Take care of us. Be with us, the church. And we in turn, oh God, hopefully we are a blessing to others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, let the people of the faith community, wherever you are, say amen. everybody let's be in an attitude of praise here I am to worship come on everybody let's worship God for just a few minutes King of all days.
Mighty good, mighty good, mighty good. All right. Okay. And we're here to what? Worship. And truly you are at home and you can really let go and get into it. All right. There's no one there but just you in the house. So praise God. And I, I want to hear you where I am here at Wesley United Methodist Church. I want to hear you. Amen. I don't want you to be silent on me today now. This is the first of the month. Praise God. Amen. And I want us to praise him. Because, you know, we never know when it could be our last time. And we got to give the Lord our all. All right. All right. Short message this morning, now we're going to come from the New Testament. The New Testament. Turn to 1 Corinthians. New Testament now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 10. And then I want you to come down to verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And coming down to verse 24. Now, I will be reading this verse of scripture from the NIV, the New International Version translation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. And I'm coming out of the NIV, the New International Version translation. And that verse of scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 24, says... Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Now yours read a little different, but I want you to remember what I just read from the NIV. Nobody should seek his own own good but did you, the good of others we got that now we've been talking about last week about the war against Racism, that war against the pandemic. Now today, this morning, I want to label our, our subject, the war against selfishness. Oh, dog, y'all didn't get that either. Oh, dog. I know y'all said that's not a war, Pastor. Just stay with me. The war against selfishness. Anyone out there 
think they might be a little selfish. Just a little bit. See, I know you're not totally, but just a little bit selfish. That you like things a certain way, you want to do things your own way, and you know I said it, you say it's my thing, I do what I want to do, and I like a certain color, amen, huh? I'm selfish. Aren't you a little bit selfish? I know we in the church think we are open to all ideas, but we got our pet peeves, the things that we like only one way. But now I do believe that if, you know, we keep saying where we're going to go from what is going on, what's going to happen after everything dies down, what direction we're going in. Well, whatever the direction we go in, we got to realize we cannot be selfish or else we won't be able to get anything done. As citizens of God's kingdom, we live by a different value system. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Why are you so, so, so quiet? Come on. Come on, people. I'm not hearing you out there. As citizens of God's what? Kingdom. We live by a different value system. You see, that, 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 that scripture I just read from the NIV, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 24, says, Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Hmm? All right. All right. Now, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that is Hard for me to do. And it's even easy to forget, is it not? Because selfishness is a battle that we fight daily. <laughs> I said selfishness is a battle we fight daily. Regardless of where you live, the color, what side of town, you have to deal with selfishness every day. Listen up now. When Jesus was hanging on the cross in intense pain, he took time for a condemned criminal hanging next to to him, Luke 23, 39 through 43. You know the story, Luke 23, 39 through 43. Jesus on the cross, one of the thieves said, Lord, save yourself, save us. And one said, Lord, we want to be with you in paradise. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Huh? Jesus was concerned about someone else at a time such as this for him about to meet death. He was still concerned about others. We have a tendency to want to be selfish, to want to take care of ourselves, but Jesus thought about someone else. Well, preacher, tell me about someone else in the Bible. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Well, you know, Stephen, when he was being stoned to death, he prayed for those who were killing him. Asking God not to lay the sin to their charge. Well, somebody said, well, preacher, where is that? Glad you asked. In the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 59 through 60. Stephen was thinking about the good of what? Others. 
when they were what? Stoning him. Asking God not to lay the sin to their charge. Well, you know about Paul and Silas, don't you? Over there in Acts chapter 16, that story, verses 25 through 34. Though Paul and Silas were beaten and wrongly imprisoned, they took the time to minister to the jailer. <laughs> Even after God sent a powerful earthquake, that broke their chains and opened their prison doors. They remained there just for the purpose of ministering to their captor. Oh, isn't that thinking about what? Someone else. <laughs> thinking about others. Oh, if that had been me, I, I would have flew on out of that jail. Wouldn't be worried about who was there, the jail and all of them, huh? I would have been concerned about my own life, wouldn't you? Oh, Lord, how tempting it must have been for Paul and Silas to run away while the opportunity was there. How easy it would have been to take care of themselves and not worry about anybody else but their act of love moved the jailer to ask how might he be saved and as a result Paul and Silas thinking about him thinking about others the jailer and his entire family were warned to Jesus Christ hallelujah well, I'm here to tell you, we're going to have to put war against selfishness. When we begin to win the war against selfishness and walk in love, I'm going somewhere, others will take notice. I better say that statement again. When we begin to win the war against our selfishness and walk in love, others will what? Take notice. We, we will never win the world by being like them. Hot dog. I better say that again too because I said. We will never win the world by being like them. Well, that's why people are going around saying, I can't tell any difference between the church and the world. Amen. Huh? So here's the question you need to answer. How many of your loved ones might come to know Jesus if you demonstrated genuine love toward them instead of ignoring, judging, are rejecting them. Ooh. Ooh, I better say that again because that takes place in my family and I know it takes care in yours too, huh? How many of your loved ones might come to know Jesus if we demonstrated that we genuinely love them instead of what? Ignoring? Now you know you got something that you ignore. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, somebody. Now, you, got, you know you got some of those, you don't you ignore them. Don't. In fact, you don't even claim them as family. <laughs> Isn't that right? You're judging them and you reject them, huh? And you have a family gathering, you don't even let them know, huh? Isn't that right? Hmm? Well, my brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is we need to put on war against what? Selfishness. Nobody just should seek their own good, but the good of others, it says in our text. War against what? Selfishness. 
this. Well, why can't we get along? Because we are living lives that are what? Selfish. Huh? Well, here now, we need to try to live an unselfish life. I said we need to try. Because you know, nothing is really going to change if we don't try to live an unselfish life. Hmm? Things will go back to being what they always have been, huh? Well, there is no greater obstacle to the life that God designed for you to live than selfishness. Ooh. Whew. Good God. I'm preaching. I'm, I'm, helping. I'm preaching, Lord. I'm trying, trying, trying. There's no greater obstacle to the life God designed you to live than what? Selfishness. Ego and self promotion pollute our souls. Oh, Lord. Now, I ought to be hitting somebody by now. Hey, man, huh? Ego. Some of us got some big egos around here, huh? Ego and what? Self-promotion. Pollute our souls and destroy our relationships. Woo. Woo. And, and, and some of this truth, hey, man. Ego. I better say that again. God, I got some big egos around here in Austin. Amen. Huh? Ego and self what? Promotion. Self promotion. Pollute our souls and destroy our what? Relationships. Well, Paul. Paul, there in the New Testament. Paul understood the need to dethrone ego. <laughs> I said, Paul understood the need to do what? Dethrone ego. There in the book of Galatians, chapter 2. Verse 20, in the NIV translation, Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul understood the need to what? Dethrone ego. I no longer live, he says, but Christ lives in me. We need to decrease and let Christ increase. Good God. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Huh? Come on, huh? Well, that's Galatians 2, 20. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Paul says he's trying to help us to have war against what? Selfishness. Oh, I'm going somewhere now. From that verse of scripture, Galatians 2, 20, where he says, I no, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This reflected three things. Well, first of all, it reflected to Paul and it should 
reflect on us a change of values. <laughs> I said a change of values. Now, I know we don't use that word too much now. Amen, huh? Paul says over in Philippians 1, 21, Paul once lived to persecute Christians, but now he says, for to me to live is Christ. Huh? Isn't that a different value? That's what I'm saying. He, he had a change of values. You so you you see we selfish people if if we have a change of values we would then move on toward being more honest. <laughs> well, y'all didn't want to hear that either. I said we would live to try to be more honest and quit telling tales. We're really just outright lying. Amen. Huh? Huh? We need to have the value of telling the truth. Huh? We always get no Trump about telling the truth. Well, we need to look at self. Oh. I said this war against selfishness reflected a change of values for Paul. He had a value now of kindness. He had a value now of compassion. He had a value now of goodness. He had a value now of gentleness. He had a value now of self-control. Well, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, reflected, first of all, a change of what values. Well, for me to live, he says, is what? Christ. Second, living an unselfish life, we have a change of values. And then Paul points out we need to have a change of ambition. A change of ambition. Well, pastor, well, I'll go over to Philippians 3, verse 7. Philippians 3 and 7. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider lost for the sake of Christ. I'm trying to stay in the word, but y'all that. that. I said Philippians 3 and 7. Now this is not Chase now. I'm preaching the word today, all right? Whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Philippians 3 and 7 in the NIV translation. A change of ambition. The old Paul whose goal was to be a recognized champion of religion, says now he doesn't consider that anything that's his ambition. I consider that now a loss for the what sake of Christ. Well, my ambition now is to give to the poor, to help those in need, to heal people, to teach the gospel, to write letters to the churches, huh? To let folks know I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He had a change of what? Ambition. He had realized that everything else up to now, he considered lost for the sake of Jesus Christ. Well, I, I think that's, that's still in Philippians 3 and 7, isn't that right, huh? And so now living that unselfish life, huh? Trying to put war, war against unselfishness. We have said we need to have a what? A change of values. And then I've said we need to have a change of what? Ambition. And then third, we need to have a change of mind. Ah, woo! Come on, pastor. Come 
on. We need to have a change of what? Mind, mind, mind. M-I-N-D, huh? Paul, the brilliant philosopher, the Pharisee and lawyer, renounces his self-seeking ways and writes over in Philippians 2, verse 5, in the contemporary English version translation, he says, think the same way that Jesus Christ thought. Oh! It says, I said, this is in the common what? The contemporary English version. Paul over in Philippians 2, verse 5 says, Think the same way that Christ Jesus thought. Well, the war against selfishness. If I think the way that Christ Jesus thought, that means it's all about love. Isn't that right? It's all about love. Regardless of your social status, I love you. Regardless of where you live, I love you. Regardless of what side of town you are, I love you. Regardless how you dressed, I love you. Nothing can separate me from the love of God in what? Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm going to change my mind, huh? A change of mind means I'm going to what? Think the same way that Christ Jesus thought. That means I'm going to love in you in spite of, huh? That I'm going to always have what? Unconditional love. Oh, here now, the war against what? Selfishness. What did you say, Pastor? I talked about a change of what? Somebody ought to say values. I didn't hear y'all sound. I didn't hear y'all not. You got to have a change of what? Values. values. Then a change of what? Ambition. Then you got to have a change of what? Whoa, pastor, bring it now. Bring it now, huh? Bring it now. Well, Paul says, I do believe that if you can have this kind of change, then you can graduate from life with high honors. Well, where did he say that? Well, I'm still over there in the book, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Because Paul had done these things, he anticipated graduating with highest honors. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, because he says, I have fought the good fight. I have what? Finished the race and did what? I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of life, huh? The fight against what? Selfishness. Well, now my brothers and sisters, as I move to a close about this war against selfishness. Well, Jesus has taught me something that uh, we can all be better, that we need to be less selfish and try to live the unselfish life. Well, you know that poet writer by the name of William Arthur Ward. I said that poet writer. You know the one y'all been telling me about, huh? He wrote these words in trying to help us to be unselfish. He says, I will do more than belong. 
I will participate. I will do more than care. I will huh, help somebody. I will do more than believe. I will practice. I will do more than be fair. I will be kind. Come on, pastor. I will do more than forgive. I will forget. I will do more than dream. I will work. I will do more than teach. I will inspire. I will do more than learn. I will enrich. I will do more than give. I will serve. I will do more than live. I will grow. I will do more than suffer. I will triumph. Well, you can't do whatever that's easiest and still reach your goal. I'm here to tell you, you need to try to be unselfish. Well, I serve an unselfish God. Oh, yes, I do. Well, I was going through the Bible, hello, and over there in Philippians 4, 19, well, it shows me that my God is not selfish. For he says, but my God shall supply <laughs> Woo! all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Some of y'all act like you don't know that it's there. That he's an unselfish God. For he's willing to share all with me. For he said, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus, the war against selfishness. Well, but let me tell you this. Well, you still might not believe, but let me tell you what my God really did that showed me that he's an unselfish God. Yeah, I looked in the Bible and found John 3.16. You didn't hear me. I think you never heard of John 3, 16. But it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what ever Lasting life. What an unselfish God that we serve. Hello, somebody. Well, he must be unselfish. Well, he's blessed you. They have more than what you used to have. He's an unselfish God. He says, I shall supply uh -huh, all that you need, huh? Well, when you've been sick, he's been the doctor in the sick room. Hello, somebody. When you was lost and couldn't find your way, he helped to find you and bring you back home. He's in what? Unselfish God. I'm so glad that the Lord woke me up this morning. Yes, he did. Yeah, and started me on my right way. He's in what? Unselfish God. Yes, when I need him, he always shows up. Well, hadn't he showed up in your life? Uh, well, 
need unselfish with his time. Well, he's unselfish with his grace. When he unselfish with his mercy. When he unselfish with his love. When he unselfish with his forgiveness. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Ghost. And the people of God said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. You didn't hear me. And unselfish. God, we got to have war against what? Selfishness. Why? Because people are hungry. And we are selfish. People down then be lifted up need to be lifted up and we are passed by only thinking about what self well now my brothers and sisters are we going to make it if we're going to go forward together I need for you to say I'm going to decrease and let Christ increase in me for I want to be like Paul. I want to graduate with the what? Highest honors. And if I can graduate with the highest honors, I can say like Paul, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. We extend you the invitation to Christian discipleship. For you to come and rededicate, recommit, and say, Lord, that big ego I got, Come, take control, let me know that, okay, how big are you going to have? I'm thirsty. I can't make it without you. Come now, let's reach I'm out and say, Lord. Invitation of song. I'm thirsty. Where are we you? Thirst for you. We search for you. In a dry and barren land, we're longing for your hand to guide us to.
for you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Yes, we do. Fall fresh on you. Come fill our hearts, Lord. Quench our thirsty soul. We search for you. Roger. We search for Amen. Dearly beloved, gathered there where you are in your, your home with other family members or friends, we come down to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. In this, the season of Pentecost. Hopefully you have your elements there before you. The bread or crackers. Your juice or wine or water. To celebrate this sacrament. With the rest of the body of Christ. This communion is open to all. For God so loved the world. That does it include all of us, not just some. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. It is baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised, oh yes he did, to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire on the day of Pentecost. Oh yes, on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread, he gave thanks to the bread, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body which is given for you and do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, but do it in remembrance of me. Pour out, please, Lord, your Holy Spirit on us gathered where we are this morning and on these gifts before us where we are of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. So by your Spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, please. One with each other and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. And now, dear hearts, we come to that moment we are ready to take this communion together at this point. The body of Christ first, your bread, your cracker, your wafer. In hand, take it right now. Put it in your mouth. Feeding on Jesus Christ deep down in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And the blood of Christ. Take your cup, your container, your glass, your cup. Now, let us drink together. Take and drink. Hallelujah. The body. The blood of Christ. Hopefully, we feel at one with each other. That we feel that we are part of the body. And that your life and my life, all of our lives matter to Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, people of the faith community. What a worship experience we have enjoyed this day. Oh, the singing, the scriptures, the proclamation of the word, amen. Somebody ought to have been helped today. Somebody ought to have been encouraged to want to go on. Take care. Keep the faith. Just trust and obey Come on, everybody. Good. I said it. No matter what's going on. He'll make it all right. Come on, sing this. Come on, sing But singers. we've got to stay strong. Be encouraged. Come on now, nuts. 
singers like me. Come no on. No matter what's going on. Stay strong. Come on, everybody. Be encouraged. No matter what's going on, he'll make it all right. But you've got to stay strong. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. See you next Sunday. Praise God. Hello, Wesley family and friends. Well, here we are. It's early June, and we're still not able to worship together in the sanctuary. In fact, our pastor has suggested that it may be as late as September before we're able to worship again in the sanctuary. I, for one, think that arrowing on the side of caution is the way to go when it comes to the safety and security of our Wesley family and friends. From a financial standpoint of view, we've closed the books for the month of April and we're now working on the month of May. I'm happy to once again be able to report that with your strong continued giving and our careful financial management on the expense side, that we have been able to meet all of our church obligations and we remain a strong financial institution. But I must caution you. We are coming up on a time of the year when we normally conduct two major worship services, one being Women's Day and the other being our annual choir concert. And while these experiences have proven in the past to be outstanding spiritual experiences, they are also programs upon which we depend each year to heavily supplement our budgets. If we are not able to return to the sanctuary soon, we will likely not be able to have those programs in the same form that we have in the past. So I encourage your continued engagement in our online worship services and in your continued faithful stewardship of what God has provided to you by providing your financial support to our church. And we will just trust God that we will come out on the other end of this pandemic in not only strong spiritual shape, but in strong financial shape as well. Remember that scholarship applications for our outgoing uh, high school students is due by August 31st. So once again, we praise God for you and we thank you for your faithful stewardship, both in our worship service participation and in your faithful giving. God bless and we'll see you again soon. Proverbs. 1821 tells us that the tongue has the power of life and death. Meaning that there is power in the words we say. Whether these words that whether these words are words that destroy or words that build up others. Words that give hope, words that bless others. In the spirit of God's great love and compassion. Our men's dance ensemble comes now, encouraging each of us to choose to bless each other with the words you say and pray. By doing so, you may be blessed. The Wesley Men's Dance Ensemble. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 